Now let us explore another interesting tool under what if analysis, that's data table. Now please do not confuse this with the Excel table that you can format as a table here under the home menu. Well, this is totally different because although the Excel table does hold data in it, it's not the data table because the core purpose of this Excel table is to manage a set of related data and format it such that it's easily identifiable. But in case of data table, that's under the data menu and what if analysis, this is purely an analytical tool. It, what Excel says, data table, it sees the results of multiple inputs at the same time. So it essentially means that it allows you to try different input values for, let's say these variable cells and see how the changes in these cells affects the final result. That's the profit in this case. Now, the only condition here is that the result must be directly or indirectly linked or connected to the input cells where we want to test our any variance. Now, before we start preparing our data table, let us first understand the purpose of data table. Let's say I want to know how much will be the profit if the selling price was 60. So we can just enter the number 60 here and we can see the profit at 750. Now consider this, you are in a meeting with a potential investor or maybe a business partner and they would like to know the level of profits if the selling price were let's say at 40 and what if the selling price was at 45, 50 is something what we have already calculated, 55, 60 and 65. And these are the selling prices that we want to test on the profits. So we know that when the selling price is 50, the profits are zero. That's no profit, no loss. And if the selling price per unit is at 60, the profits are at 750. But what about the rest? I'll have to go back manually change this to 40. I see the profit as negative 750. Just type it here and note it. Further, let's test it out on 45. It's negative 375. Hit enter. We know at 50, it's a perfect zero. That's no profit, no loss. But what if it's at 55? It's positive 375. That's a profit of 375. 60, we have already tested it out and now 65, it's 1125. Now that's quite inconvenient here. Now let's say in the middle of meeting, another person comes up and says, let's try it out at 70. So we want to add another 70 here and then go back, make the change here to 70 and then hit enter and make note of this here, 1500. Now this could get really inconvenient and also affect the flow of your discussions, especially if you're occupied with entering the prices and noting the profits back and forth. So someone comes up and says, let's revisit the price when it was at 45. You go back and forth, making the changes. It would have been convenient if you would have already prepared such table before the meeting, but it does take some time and you can never expect to note down all the possible criteria. Let me repeat that sentence right from convenient, okay? Now, it would have been convenient if you already had prepared such table before the meeting, but it would really be difficult to assume or guess what all potential selling prices would be considered during the meeting. So at the most, you might have a sample list over here but then just imagine if you were asked to try out some similar analysis with changes in variable cost. Something like, let's say, variable cost when it was 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50, and so on. Now, it would really help me if there is a tool that can help me test multiple pricing and cost scenarios all at once in just few clicks. Well, data tables are here for our rescue. 
With the help of data tables, you can avoid manually noting down each of these results for each variance in input values. Now let me show you a few data tables here. Now these two over here are the single dimensional data tables. That means they just have one variable input for each of these criteria. Now if you carefully observe, these numbers over here are exactly the same as what we see here. These numbers are exactly the same and this is something that we have achieved with the help of data table. We can also achieve similar results in this format as well, that's change in variable cost. Further, there's also something called as a two-dimensional data table wherein it focuses on multiple two inputs at the same time. Now let us try to build this from scratch. Okay, so first we'll test the impact of change in prices on the profits. So here, first things is the first step that we need is to link a particular cell to the final output cell. That's the profits. I'll make this look bold with this in with this cell over here. Now let us have the input values or the test criteria. So that's selling price while at 40 and then 45. Well, I could just copy paste it from the left as well. I'll take it from here and paste it here. So here we have the target cell linked. That's the final result linked over here. Whereas the rest of them are all manually entered. None of them are linked. Okay, we need to ensure that although we see that the selling price per unit is already given, we are not linking here. We will manually enter these values and ensure that the arrangement is such that these parameters are not in the same column where you have the cell linked to the final result. Now, while you have this arrangement in place, select these cells, come to data menu, and the data menu you have what if analysis and then select data table. Now it asks for row input cell and column input cell. The easiest way to decide whether you need to give row input cell or column input cell is, well, the parameters that you want to test, are they arranged in a single column or are they arranged in single row? Well, they are arranged in single column. So let's call it as column input cell. And where do I want to test these values in? I want to test these values against the selling price per unit. So column put cell will be the selling price per unit cell reference. Click OK. And that's it. You have the data ready all at a click. Something that we were manually copying all this while. It would have taken me closer to around a minute or one and a half minute. If not at least half a minute. Here, I just got it done in just few clicks. How did this happen? So what exactly is happening here? We have this number and against which we see what the profits will be like. So if the profit, so if the selling price was to be at 55, the profit is expected to be at 375. Although we don't see any changes happening here in these are nowhere dependent on these, but we still see based on different scenarios, the potential results for the profits. So for example, let's say we have 55. If the selling price I were to change to 55, this data table says that the profit would be 375. So let's hit enter. And yes, it is. Well, what if the selling price was 70? As per the data table, it must be, will it be 1,500? Let's check. Well, yes. So data table with just a matter of few clicks helped me save a lot of manual efforts here. Instead of manually typing this and copy pasting it over here, Excel did this automatically. Well, Excel didn't do anything different. This is something which is not visible to us, but Excel is also taking this value applying it here, which we had mentioned as a target column reference cell. It takes the value as if it's copying this, paste it here, 
get the result, copy and paste the result here. Again, next take 45, put it here, copy the result that you will get and paste it here. Take 50, put it here, copy whatever profits that you get while this is at 50 and paste it here. And it goes on so many times. There are multiple level of iterations happening, but that is something that is not visible to us. But that is something not visible to us. It's happening in the background. All we can see is we have just clicked on OK on that data table window and everything was readily done for us quite conveniently.